anytime on CBS. These Pacific Ocean waters may look pristine from above, but lurking beneath is an environmental tragedy that's been unfolding for generations. A toxic dump site that settled on the ocean floor decades ago continues to wreak havoc on marine life to this day. Meteorologist and climate specialist Jeff Birodelli is back with more. Data, that toxic chemical is making its way higher and higher up the food chain. Now it's in marine mammals up and down the California coast. So we traveled there to see how these creatures are paying the price for environmental missteps from a half a century ago. Loud and exceptionally social, sea lions are known for making a scene. But this California sea lion is sick. Known affectionately as Mooncake, she's being screened at the Marine Mammal Center, which is right near the Golden Gate Bridge. She's just one of hundreds of struggling sea lions rescued from California beaches each year. Another indication, veterinarians say, of just how much the ocean is plagued. About 25% of the adult and sub-adults do have cancer. And uh, that is an extremely alarming number. As the lead veterinarian, Dr. Kara Field examines rescued sea lions for cancer. Given the very severely high rate and, and how abnormal it is, it's really important that we understand what is driving this disease in these animals. And now we may just have an answer. A recently published study points to high levels of DDT in the mammal's blubber. Before it was banned in 1972, DDT was used worldwide as a pesticide. The nation's largest manufacturer was right on the California coast. Montrose Chemical opened up its Los Angeles plant in 1947. By 1970, it was clear something was very wrong. When a recent report showed a high presence of DDT in the fish, residents were shocked. This polluted Pacific water was coming from millions of pounds of DDT discharged by Montrose. David Valentine, a University of California marine biologist, spent 10 years looking into the company's past practices. So they dumped them into the storm drains, they dumped them into the sanitary sewer. In response, a 34 square mile area just offshore was designated as a Superfund cleanup site. Montrose was sued. And almost half of the $140 million settlement was used by NOAA to try to restore at least some of the contaminated habitat. And one of the goals of the restoration funds and restoration work is to enhance fisheries. So the government tasked Jonathan Williams, a marine biologist from Occidental College, to design a seven-acre artificial reef just off the beach. So by providing healthier habitat right here, that means that it's less likely DDT is entering the food chain? That's correct. If you have healthier habitat, you're going to have healthier fish. For several decades, scientists and regulators were focused on the hazardous toxic Superfund site just about two miles offshore, while all the while an even more shocking discovery was waiting to be unearthed about 10 miles offshore in between here and Catalina Island. Large barrels of DDT waste were being taken out on a barge and then jettisoned and dropped to the seafloor. Chasing rumors of this second massive Montrose dump site 3,000 feet below, Valentine sent a submersible autonomous robot down into the abyss. Lo and behold, there are likely thousands, if not hundreds of thousands, of barrels of DDT on the ocean bottom. And getting the first pictures back was really the moment we went, Oh, wow. We're the first people to lay eyes on this in 60, 70 years. But even with this underwater video, there was no response, let alone any course of action. I've been beating the drum on this for 10 years. I've talked to, to numerous um, people within agencies, within government, trying to, to generate some interest. But last year, after Valentine published his findings, interest finally followed. 10 years after your initial research, an article comes out in the fall, and then all of a sudden, there's a reaction to it, and there's a big research project going on right now just offshore. That's exactly right, and I hope it is just the first of many things that gets done. Last month, 35,000 acres of ocean floor was surveyed by Scripps Institution of Oceanography. The final count of barrels is still being tallied, but researchers describe their findings as overwhelming. But this new information is too little, too late for many of California's sea lion population. 
Veterinarians had to euthanize 29 mammals last year alone, all because of cancer. In the coming months, the plan is for state and federal agencies to convene to figure out just how to respond to these shocking findings. Now, Scripps says the report's going to be done by the end of the month, and by then we will know just how many barrels there are. But there could be as many as a half a million barrels. So then the question becomes, what if anything can be done to clean up this mess? And I think the moral of the story, guys, is what we do now affects generations ahead, our children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, same problem with climate change. Can you, like, literally physically go down, lift it up, take it out? It seems risky. That's, I mean, because if you pick oh, them up, yeah. they're 3,000 feet down. There's a different pressure down there. So this is not going to be easy if they can even do anything at all. In 10 years.